Hi, my name is Christine Kane, and this is Sketchbook Hiking. We're at McClawfrey Springs Woods, and this place is a hotbed for spring wildflowers. It's May, it's about 73 degrees, there's not a cloud in the sky, and I'm so excited to be here. I'm going to show you some wildflowers, we're going to go on a short hike, and then we're going to do a really easy watercolor sketch that you could do yourself. Come along! Claffrey Springs Woods is a 250-acre forest preserve 35 minutes southwest of downtown Chicago, Illinois. It is part of the Palos and Sag Valley Trail System, which has 40 miles of connected trails. This area has a unique topography. Glaciers carved deep ravines and created huge hills when they advanced and retreated many, many years ago. Mill Creek is the name of the beautiful winding stream which flows through This is the location that we're going to sketch. It's beautiful. You hear the Babylon Brook here. You see the rocks and a little bit of the bridge we've got. And um, we're going to do a really quick, easy watercolor sketch. Now, why do I call it a watercolor sketch and not a watercolor painting? Because a sketch is quick, it's fast, it's easy, and it's messy. A watercolor painting, we're not going to frame it. We just want to get some reference points down. We just want to hike on a trail and, and document what we see. We want to do a quick and fast, so we call it a watercolor sketch. Now First, we're going to start with a real simple uh, graphite sketch here, just so that we have a road map of where we're going. I've got the trail as an S shape, part of the bridge, some trees in the background, this hill coming down, and then the front, some rocks and a little bit of water. I'm not going to worry about how many trees I have here. This is going to be a real quick watercolor sketch. I just want to get down some simple shapes and simple colors. Okay, first we're going to come in with some solarillion blue and a fat round brush. Load that color on there and we're going to paint on just some spots in the sky. Now, I'm going real fast. I only see the sky in a little bit, little bit parts here. So, I'm just gonna dot it in, going in between the trees there. Now, I'm not worrying about how exact I'm gonna be. I'm just laying some color in there. Next, we're gonna take some, some spring green here. And we're gonna just dot where we see some leaves here. There's just a little bit of leaves. There's more grass on the ground, but we're just going to suggest here that these are spring leaves. Notice I'm just getting shapes in here. I'm just putting in blobs. We're going to think of everything in terms of blobs and we're not going to get exact. When you start a watercolor painting, you might get discouraged because you look at it and you say, this is not how I want it to be, but you'll see in the end it's really gonna, it's gonna come out in the end. So now I'm gonna take some uh, sap green and I'm gonna get the grass. Now remember, we got a hill right up here. So this is our trail and this is the hill on top. So I'm just gonna plop in some grass color here going around my tree, just so I could define where the grass is and where the trees are. And I'm not worried about what I'm covering up. I'm not going to stress about it. This is all about having fun coming out here and doing maybe a, a 25, 30, 30 minute sketch just to get the basic colors down so that you could take a piece of nature home with you.
A picture's good. Pictures are good to do, but maybe you just want to have a little interpretation of, of what you're seeing here out on this beautiful spring day. So now that we got some of this green in here, I'm going to clean my brush. Notice I'm still using this big fat brush. I'm not changing. And I'm going to take in some tree color here. I'm just going to do a really light, it's a little bit of cobalt and um, some sepia. And I'm going to come in and I'm just going to reference where my tree is. Now it's real light looking. It's real pale. You almost don't see it, but that's okay. Because watercolors seem tricky, but they're not. You always want to start with your lightest color and go darker. So here I'm just suggesting some trees in the background. Later on, I'll go ahead and I'll, I'll make them darker. Now because my background is still wet, these trees over here are kind of going to fade into the background and that's what I want. I don't know how many trees there are. There are uh, several, several, uh, maybe a hundred. I'm not going to count them all, but the viewer gets the idea if you have a lot of sticks going in here, what your trees look like. Now our trail is white, but there's a lot of gray in it. So I'm just using some palette mud here, which means I'm just taking color that I used before and I'm just going to go ahead and go around the edges of my trail to shadow that in. Maybe I'm going to add a little yellow to that just to give it maybe some ochre just to give it a different color to show that here's a trail and there's some rocks on here and if that looks too stark to me if I'm not happy with that I could take my brush, clean it off, and I could push it around. Push it around. So now it's not a solid line. It looks like a trail. We'll come back later and, and fill that in. But the trail, the main trail goes off here, but then it also comes down here by the water. So I'm going to reference that in there. Just get that shape in there where people have been walking. They go off trail and they come down here. They want to look at the beautiful water. Maybe they want to hear that trickling sound. Hopefully you can hear it now. We've got that beautiful babbling brook going on here. And it's very peaceful. So now I'm going to take some more green. I'm going to come in here. And we've got some marsh marigolds popping up on the edge. So I'm going to take and clean my brush. I'm still using that big fat brush. I'm going to take some bright yellow here and I'm just going to dot it. We'll come back in later and fill that out, but I'm going to reference where those marsh marigolds are. You might think they're dandelions from here, but they're not. And they like to live close to water, so I'm just going to go ahead and, and dot that in there and move to the water now. Okay, now I'm going to come in with some uh, some stream color here. And when you think of water, you always think of blue. You always think of blue water, but it's really not. If you look, it's um it's a green and a brown. It's reflecting uh, reflecting the bottom of the stream, and it's also reflecting the trees. So when we work with water, I'm not going to fill in the whole thing. I'm going to leave a lot of white space in here. I'm going to go back and forth making sweeping strokes and I'm going to suggest that that's water. Go around the rocks. Always remember to leave a lot of white space in your watercolor painting. White space gives it a little bit of breath and makes it not feel so heavy. I'm going to go around these rocks here. Now that looks exactly like the water or the, co the, the color of the stream. Okay, next I'm going to come in here and I'm going to get that bridge. The bridge is, um, I mixed alizarin and crimson and uh, burnt sienna. I'm going to make a really rich red. And I'm just going to come in here and I'm going to suggest the bridge here. I can redefine it later. I like to use uh, micron pens and make it uh, really stand out. But right now, I'm just coming in here and I'm, I'm getting uh, a rough rough outline of the edge of that bridge there. And don't worry how dark it looks because uh, watercolor